Hi all, today we're talking about the Insignia oil seal that always goes, that one. So, how do you do it? Right, well, it's not actually as much of a challenge as you think, and now I've done it, I can kind of tell you. So, first thing is, three bolts off the bottom of the DPF, take that off. Obviously you need to jack the car up, make sure it's on axle stands, make sure you're safe, etc. Um, so those three off, there. You then need those two off on the support uh, that holds up the exhaust and you need the two off on the exhaust there. That takes off, um, that takes off the exhaust. Then what you've got to do is you don't actually need to take the drive shaft out. Sorry, this is so close. You don't actually need to take the drive shaft out. <clears throat> what you have to do is that sits up on the sump like that. You have to take the drive shaft carrier out. So here, you take the three 13s out of that, or whatever they are, out of that. You take the three bolts out of this. Um, and the thing is, you can't actually take the three bolts out of this unless the carrier's off. So you don't actually need to take the hub off, which I did, um, and then put back on. Okay, there's two tricky bolts. I'll show you those. There's these two here that need to come out, which is just off the bottom of the DPF. You don't need to take the DPF off. One 10 millimeter bolt to take that out. This wire here, and what you do with this is you have to right, raise that yellow thing right up to then push that in, or up, in, anyway, yeah, in to get that off. You then take out your series of the bolts around here, okay? There's two small ones at the front and two big ones here. And then there's the two nasty ones which are here, this one and this one. Now there's gonna be all kinds of tweeting about how you can, um... oh, anyway, don't worry. You need to cut some holes in a gearbox. And the straight answer is with this, look, you need to be as close to the front as you can because stuff starts to get nasty in here if you don't come close to the front, close to the sump side. Do this at your own risk, but look, you can literally drill out enough to get past those. Now, a lot of people are going to say to you, you need a 150 mil T40 Torx or something to do this. But actually, you don't. You can do it with an Allen key. Um, let me just find the Allen key I used. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, there we go. So I literally just use an Allen key and you can get up through here with the Allen key. Now, do you see this mark in the flywheel here? You need to turn the engine and find this mark to be able to get up and past and let the bolt with the washer through it. So you drill the holes, as you can see, look, you're really close to coming into what is probably an oil passageway uh, in the gearbox. So you've got to stay as close to the sump as you can, as the, not the gearbox side, the sump side as you can. Um, yeah, okay. Obviously you've got to clean off all the gasket sealant material, etc., uh, to put you get your sump back on again. And what I would recommend doing while you're in here is to change the big ends. Now, it doesn't matter how short a time you've been running with no or low oil pressure, um, you will guaranteed have done some damage. And for the sake of 25 quid and eight bolts, it doesn't seem sensible not to do it when you're in here. I mean, this one, it's not too bad. You could have left it. I wouldn't have thought it's a good idea, but it's not really naft. Um, you obviously pick that out there. Um, and then you push the new one back in. It comes with a little twiddly thing that you can push it back in with. Um, you're not really going to tell why the other one's knackered. I mean, they, they just get a bit hard or something. They don't really look like they're naffed. It's, it looks fine to me. But stupid design, but there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, that's. Uh, they say you should use new stretch bolts when you put these back in. But there's a load of forums where people say, that they've spec'd these um, and when you uh, they actually return to factory spec when you uh, loosen them so there's no point in changing them that's your decision the book says change them i'm not um i'm talking these to 25 foot pounds and uh, 90 degrees 
but I don't know if that's 100% correct. That was just a suggestion I saw by somebody on the Insignia forum. If you do that, it's up to you. Look it up on the book is probably better. But yeah, it's not actually as horrific as you'd think. Um, it's a bit of a challenge to get the sump out from under here, I must admit. It, it really does. You need to get a finickety angle to get it out. It's a challenge, that. Um, so yeah, it's it's not too bad really uh, especially being as you don't have to take out as much as you think you do and, and frankly i i started to take off the whole hub and the wishbone and all that nastiness but you really don't need to it's uh the trick is is to take the the carrier bearing carrier out you don't even need to take the um circlip out of it you literally just um undo the three bolts um so there we go i mean i hope that helps um uh, oh, one thing I've found as well is that uh, the um, the new bearings come in two colours. Well, one's white metal and one's non-white metal. And I couldn't find out which way you were supposed to do it. So I would consider the white metal one to be the one that's a better bearing. So I put it on top and the silver one, which is presumably something else. I don't know. Uh, I've put on the bottom. I may be right, I may be wrong, I don't know. Um, really, the point of this video is actually to show you how to do it in terms of getting a sump off. Um, past that, whatever you do, it's your problem. Um, I mean, I made a hell of a mess here. Um, I could tidy it up with a burr, but I just did that with a drill. Um, and uh, the reason I did that is because I kind of feel what I was hitting. You see, the moment I hit whatever that was behind, I could stop. Um, but yeah, it's there's plenty of space so long as you stay forwards this way. If you go that way, you're going to puncture the gearbox. But yeah, it's damaged nothing up. Um, I mean, you don't, I actually ended up losing a little bit of gearbox oil um, because I took this out. You don't even need to do that. So I added, you know, but this is, I'm teaching you so that you don't, or I'm telling you so you don't have to learn this stuff. Um, yeah, eBay, 25 quid set of uh, shells. So, and the, 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 that bit is like a tenner um, and if you've caught it in time all cool um, just to, in terms of the um, the rods the way to tell if they're any if they're how knackered they are is if you can run your fingernail across it and feel ridges in it you've got a problem also if they go blue um, so they want to be smooth and you don't want to feel it with your fingernail but frankly at the point where you're here um, it you, you might as well put shells on it almost however bad it is because at least when you put it back together again, you can load it onto a trailer to go for scrap as opposed to, um, you know. So there we are. Well, there we are, guys. Apologies for the focal length on all this, but I am like directly underneath a car. Um, so enjoy.